YouTube. Welcome to my book review of St. Matthews by D.A. Matfield. Sorry that it was taking so long. I kind of had my boyfriend over for three days and then I was working on a script and then I had computer issues, but that's in the past now. Let's move on to the here and now with the book review. The, the book is about a drifter who, after being rehab, drifted around until he comes across a small town, finds love and happiness and friends, and then the moment his ex calls and says, please, I need, I want you to come home, he goes right back out of sense of duty. Thanks, Cooper. We, we need that heartbreaking scene. But anyways, I'll get more into, into how much that scene broke my heart in a million pieces. Oh, I hear a heartbreak. But anyway, in the characters, so with without further ado, let's talk about the characters. The first character is Cooper Wyatt. The main character, after a car accident he and his then lover Jordan were involved in, he went to rehab and then drifted around a bit, like never seeing what one place enough for enough time to be attached. Until he came across San Anago, I for, don't know how to pronounce it, the name of the town, and begins working at a gay bar called St. Nachos. There he meets Sean Cooper, and fall, and they be, fall in love, and the first part of the book is just the relationship forming between him and Sean, and him getting used to the the people at the bar, like the sh the chefs who who constantly bigger, but somehow work together fine. The two gay owners. No, just getting used to the town. Then halfway through the book, or so, like at some point in the book, his ex Jordan calls and says, "Hey, come back. I need you." Basically, guilt trips him back away from the happy life he was forming, cause he was a mess. Now, th that broke, scene broke my heart. Like, it was just as heartbreaking the second time reading it as the first time reading it. I swear, reading that scene, you can hear a heartbreak somewhere. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Cooper. We needed that. Well, that side. Basically, well, the entire story is about, about, it's kind of like the parent, his relate, relationship with Sean, with his friendship with his ex, and how unhealthy the friendship is. I'll get more to that when I talk about Jordan, but, yeah, no competition who you want to end up with. <laughs> really no competition, no matter what Jordan thinks. So, yeah. Cooper is... He's a kind person. He does feel remorse about the accident, but he doesn't let it dominate his life that much. He's still a stable person and can hold down a steady job without falling apart. He plays the violin. He's extremely loyal in the book. The fact that he went all the way back to his hometown, despite how much it killed him to leave Sean and his friends, just to help his ex readjust the civilian life again after being released from prison. That's a lot of loyalty. And I wish Jordan was more appreciative of that, but I'll get to that in his character description. So, yeah, with th that way, let's move on to Sean. Sean's the love interest of the book, like the one he meets in at St. Nacho's. He's very sweet. He's also deaf, but that's the minor part of his character, so I mentioned it. But he's very determined, very assertive, and he's the one who insisted on there being a relationship between him and Cooper, even though Cooper was less than compliant with getting close to someone at first. The point where the, one of the chefs like, don't kick him when he, don't kick him down like that, dude. It's like kick a, a lost puppy. Yeah, so yeah, he's really cute, but very assertive. Don't let his looks fool you. He's no pushover. He even traveled across states the moment he found out where Jordan was to bring him back 
to save nachos. That's dedication, if anything. So, yeah. To say the least, he's a great boyfriend in this story. Now on to Jordan. The, the, Jordan was Cooper's ex in the book. They, they did have... They were kind of dating in high school, and by dating, I mean... It was more of a friends with benefits relationship where they did go off to sleep with other people too, and, it was, and they were hardly ever sober. They start freaking high school, so it all stopped though after they got into a car accident that Jordan was driving with. Just putting it out there that Jordan was the driver. He insists on getting those keys. At the accident killed a child, and that. Traumatized Cooper out of, dr out of driving cars and drinking. Like Cooper ne never picked up a beer again after that day, and Jordan had to go to prison to say at least because he was the driver in the first place. So yeah. So yeah, when he called Cooper back and broke every reader's heart, I tore in a heartbreak, but. Anyway, moving on from that, he, he basically called him back, hoping to kind of continue a kind of continue a actual romantic relationship with Cooper. But by then, Cooper's heart was already given out to Sean and owned completely. He's and plus Jordan's a mess was a mess of a person. Even if Cooper did get over Sean, I. Don't think it would be a healthy relationship. Jordan literally guilt tripped him back home by by preying on his ex's sense of duty and guilt over the accident. He not only did he guilt trip him to come back home, he guilt tripped him to sleep in the same bed with him because he has nightmares. And never mind what his ex thinks about sleeping with someone he used to have sex with. It's the fact that he had nightmares at the most important, not his, not his friend's comfort level. So, nice guy, huh? He gets worse. Cooper is, although written with guilt, less of a mess than Jordan. But Jordan is a remorseful mess, not even being honest with his confidant, Pastor Stan, who we'll get to later. Lying to Pastor Stan, saying that... Cooper insisted on driving and he threw the keys but really was he insisted that Cooper give him the keys so he can drive them back home while Cooper was like, no, let's stay here and sober up so we don't get into a car accident. So he lied about that, often snapped at Cooper for being more well-adjusted in the town and not being such a mess he is, just acting really bitter towards this person who dropped everything to help him, you know, like polite, nice people do. And when the relationship, the relationship fell apart, he, he very not only snapped at Cooper, but he turned to BDSM for, for comfort so he wouldn't begin drink again. He heavily projects on the Cooper. Like, he, he can't, Jordan often felt the urge to drink, so he thought logically Cooper must, but he doesn't. So he constantly pushes his push of religion on him along with Pastor Stan, who we'll, again we'll get to. At at kind of projecting like how like kind of like thinking, how can he be such a mess with it, but his ex be a hundred percent fine? It's he's really bitter about it and just very snappy about it and it's like Dude, the, let me repeat myself. Cooper dropped everything, moved across state, leaving behind people he cared about to help him reach a society, and this is how he was treated. Yes, that is horrible. But it's supposed to be horrible. Like, they compared, the story kind of compared his relationship with Sean, which was much healthier, to his friendship with Jordan, which was very codependent. I'll get into into the details of that in the themes, but 
Yeah, just know Jordan is a complete mess. I don't hate him. He's just like he needed to get his stuff together. Like you know, he was falling apart the seams. Okay, moving on to the next character, Pastor Stan. Pastor Stan was the priest of a church. Of a church. He met Jordan in prison doing a kind of a rehabilitation program for prisoners, and Jordan clung to him like a life preserver, tr trying to get his life together. Pastor Stan is extremely loyal to Jordan, which is fine in itself. He's compassionate. He doesn't judge for the most part. Talk in about in a few minutes, and he. Is very devout. But the problem is he's way too pushy about religion towards Cooper. Cooper rejects him several times. Like that, like that, like something like this. Thank you for helping my friend. I am beyond grateful for what you did for, for Jordan. But this isn't for me. But again, thank you for helping my friend. So Jordan respect, respectively rejects him. N never once was rude about it, but he's constantly puts his religion on to join along with, with, with Jordan, and whenever Cooper checks him, he talks down to him. Like, how, how dare you reject, reject Jesus? You need him. You're broken. You're this, you're that. It's like, dude, he doesn't need your religion. He's thankful for what you did for his friend. You are really annoying. I'm gonna give. I'm just gonna say this because I know someone's gonna take this out of context. If you have to turn to religion for comfort and it helps you, fine. Go ahead. I am literally not gonna judge you for it. I want to do that myself. However, if someone said they're not interested in your religion and respectfully rejects you, let it go. They are not interested and. Pushing on them makes you an annoyance. Respect other people's opinions. Respect how other people think. Like, I didn't find Pastor Stan annoying because he was religious. I found how he pushed his religion on the main character constantly and treated him like damaged goods for not being religious annoying. It's just... <sighs> Look, so I know people are going to take this out of context anyway. I just put that disclaimer so I have a record to defend myself with. Okay? So, other char noble characters include Cooper's sister, who's firmly on his side no matter what he needs for happiness, which is refreshing because Sarah and Pastor Stan is firmly in Jordan's corner and Cooper needed someone on his side. The the bigger chefs at St. Nachos and the owners who are all very nice to Cooper. But with that way, let's get to the teens. Okay, the theme of the book is moving on with your life and forgive yourself for the past. I think the theme is really highlighted in the friendship Cooper has with Jordan. It's very, co very codependent friendship. Cooper went there to help him feel like if he could own, it could help his friend readjust society and just be there for him, like he, that he could make up for his role in the accident. So he's going out there out of a need to forgive himself. But that's just, that doesn't sound like a very healthy way to forgive yourself. Like, you're very dependent on someone else's well-being for your happiness, which is a bad idea. And Jordan wants him back to kind of make everything okay. Like, he wants, he wants a romantic relationship regardless, and, and try to pursue regardless of what Cooper, Cooper thought. He wanted a sense of normalcy. That's why he wanted Cooper back. Like, thinking, if they could work out between him and Cooper, if they could, if they could go somewhat back to normal without the, without alcohol, that he could be 
fine, even though he's not being honest with himself about the past. So he can't move on when he's not accepting his his part of the blame. He lied to Pastor Stan about the day of the accident to put more of the blame on the Cooper than himself, even though he had more of the blame because he was a driver and insisted on getting the keys. It's like you have to accept your part before you learn to forgive yourself, and the relationship is really unhealthy and codependent. He constantly snaps at Cooper whenever he gets upset that Cooper is more well-adjusted than he is, even if Cooper is still guilt-ridden, Cooper is more well-adjusted, so he snaps at, he snaps at Cooper because he's unhappy with how unhappy he is, which is not very healthy, Despite all Cooper is doing for him, and despite how kind Cooper is being to him, even though he lied, which would, let's just say I don't like liars very well. Especially when you do a lie to make someone think less of someone else. He, he when it's, Jordan finally sees that a relationship between him and Cooper was not going to work out, he turns the BDSM as a coping mechanism because the alternative is drinking alcohol. Over, and the past also affected Cooper. It made him re, outright relocate from a place he's happy with just to help Jordan so he can feel like he's doing, doing something about his past. And Jordan constantly Jordan blamed him for the him for the accident, like thanks him giving the keys. Blamed him for, like said it was his fault because he gave him the keys after he insisted on getting the keys. It's like it's not a healthy relationship. You are dragging him down, which is a main part of the story of how unhealthy the relationship is. How it's holding Cooper in the past and making him miserable, and the, the entire. And even his Cooper sister outright told him that if after he had Jordan Keys, he is not responsible for anything that happened afterwards. So the whole entire story is about him moving on from the past and learning to forgive himself for a change. Jordan overall doesn't hurt him. There's just one uncomfortable scene where they get into a fight because J Jordan was unhappy unha with himself again and was kind of being glared at by some of the people in the town because they didn't forgive him for what he did. And he, and they just kind of fight over it that Jordan started. And at first it kind of looks like an attempted rape scene. And it's like, it made me really uncomfortable. But I don't know what that fight was like. I don't know what that fight scene was supposed to be. So I I could be seeing things there. Just tell me in the comments that you read what you interpreted the fight between Jordan and Cooper as starring as. Okay. So yeah, when Cooper was in the town where St. Nachos was at, he was happy. He be was beginning to move on from the past. It was even, he even noted that he looked much more relaxed than St. Nachos. Like, like, it, he was very, but when he got back town, he was more tense. He was miserable. He missed his friends. He was drowned by people who were blaming him for the, for everything in the accident and blaming him for, and for Jordan Kate, blame, blaming him for being, like, just having an easier time than him. Instead of being happy, Cooper isn't the mess he is. So overall, the theme of the book is, like I said, it's moving on from your past. And I feel like the past is represented in Jordan perfectly. So, yeah. The, the book does it really well, especially when you compare the relationships. With Cooper's relationship, John was happy, healthy, and not bothered cute and not also not bogged down by a, a, a axe in the past that near them could get over. 
Like, his relationship with Sean was not bogged down by, by his past. It was healthy, and they were both well-adjusted people, for the most part. Like, Cooper still had a guilt complex, but he was getting better at the, at the town with St. Malcolm's back, so he was doing fine. And his relationship with Jordan was full of baggage from the past and blame and just Jordan being a needy mooch moocher constantly guilt tripping him in, into doing stuff that would make him more comfortable and disregarding Cooper's feelings. It's just <sighs> overall they show how unhealthy the past is for him through the, his relationship with Jordan. And they do it really well. So, yeah. I feel like Story did this scene really well. Like, five out of five. Now on to the sex scenes. The only sex scenes that are in the book are between him and Sean. Some are detailed and get the details about what they are doing to one another. Others are less detailed and more to say, he did this, he did this, he did this. Kind of like, you know, just less detailed, just kind of summar summarizing what they're doing. The, most of them don't take place in public except one where Cooper gave Sean a blowjob in public and the